is an approximately five minute walkthrough of the draw.io live app for Quip. So as a summary, Draw.io is a diagramming app, uh, in this case, fully embedded, including in-place editing within Quip. Briefly, Quip is a modern SaaS collaboration tool that's designed to let you create and edit content without like, breaking your flow. So we're going to assume that Draw.io is installed into your Quip instance. Anywhere on any page, start typing at Draw. Top option is Draw.io diagram, click Insert and the template splash screen will appear. Here you can either select one of the existing templates, for example, engineering, flowchart, software, etc., and you can base your diagram on that, or you can just insert a blank diagram. It's possible to customize which templates appear in this splash screen, but we're gonna need a admin screen in Quip to make that more accessible to users. It's, it's not particularly user-friendly just at the time of making this video. So create a blank diagram and you end up with the main editor area, which unsurprisingly is blank. And that's where we create and edit the diagram. Above that, you can see the menu toolbar uh, and, and various options to, to configure the editor. So we can create simple diagrams using this simplified interface. You can insert shapes via the insert menu. There's a rectangle, there's a circle. Uh, I'm gonna give myself two circles for now. If you, if you click and drag a shape it, from the center, that moves and drop positions where you, where you drop the shape. When it's selected, you see these various blue handles around the shape. I'm talking about the blue dots, not the arrows in this case. If you click and drag a dot, a resize handle, that resizes in the appropriate direction. And this additional blue dot is the rotation handle. And we'll put that back for now. The, to add uh, a shape, uh, to uh, sorry, to add text to a shape, select the shape, start typing, some text there. More text there, and double click anywhere in space to add text in that position. When I say um, double click, if you're on a touch device, it's, it's double press. The editor container in Quip uh, resizes to fit the diagram. If, if you defocus and refocus the diagram, you'll see it's been resized to fit the height of the diagram with a little bit of padding. Over on the right here, this handle, if you drag it left and right, controls how many columns across the Quip diagram that the diagram container occupies. If you want additional space downwards, you can either drag a shape downwards. If you'd like to see where you're dragging it to, if you click the Draw Diagram menu and click Extend however many times you want, that extends the canvas downwards. But notice if you defocus and then refocus, it will go back to fitting to the exact height. If you get to a point where everything doesn't fit the container, just click fit on the toolbar or use the plus minus zoom buttons to, to zoom appropriately. In this simplified editor mode, we do have various connection functionality available to us. If you select a shape, you will see four blue arrows around the shape. If you hover over a shape without selecting, you will see the blue arrows and you will see uh, some small blue crosses. If we click one of the blue arrows, you will get a connected clone of that shape created in the appropriate direction. If we rotate now these shapes, if I can grab it around each other, you will see that the connector floats around the perimeter of each shape, anchored at the center of each shape. And we call this a floating connection. Now, the other type of connection is a fixed connection. And these are fixed to specific points around the shapes, the crosses that I showed you earlier. So if I grab this one, and pop it over to here and rotate again, that's fixed to those exact points on the perimeter. Now this doesn't show it fantastically, so I will cheat, make this an orthogonal connector. You didn't see that formal panel yet. And then if I carry on rotating them around each other, you can see the orthogonal routing kicking in 
to make sure that it goes from one connection point to the other, avoiding, avoiding them shapes themselves if required. So there's a number of keyboard shortcuts um, that can change these behaviors. Um, if you click on the help menu, which is the, which is that, the little uh, question mark, um, that's actually quite hard to show you. So I've got the SVG of the keyboard shortcuts. Now these are really useful if you think you're gonna be more of a power user. Um, take for example, holding the Alt key while dropping a connector that allows you to create a fixed point anywhere on a shape, including inside it. So if I grab this connector, drop it out, and if I start dragging upwards and then hold Alt, um, I can drag anywhere I want. So for example, I put it there. Uh, let's bring that to front so you can actually see it and then start moving this shape around and you'll see it, there's a new fixed connection point that I've dynamically set by holding Alt on dropping. But if you think you're gonna be using diagramming a lot, definitely have a look at those, those keyboard shortcuts. So you've already seen when I cheated that the menu brings some other functionality out onto the page. Before we look at those, just be aware that the Dryo diagram menu here hold some additional quite useful options, mainly import and export. Uh, you can export to various formats, SVG, PNG, PDF. You can import um, various other diagramming product uh, files, for example, Gliffy, Lucidchart.bsdx from a certain well-known uh, diagramming product. What you can also do, uh, Another type of import is you can grab a PNG, for example, in a file system, a PNG or an SVG, drag it into the editor itself, um, and that will become an image that you can resize and manipulate as you can any other shape. And also you can import a file, for example, from another tool by just dragging and dropping it into the editor. It will perform the import, and then you'll have a copy of that diagram in the Dryo format that's fully editable. So the shapes and format windows. Now I brought up the format window before. You just, if you, if you click on these options, if, if you want to remove them again, you, you just click them again. And, and I will add, if you defocus away from it, everything goes away. So it just looks like an image of the diagram. Focus again and, and they pop back up again. So let's start with the shapes uh, window. Uh, firstly, you can move it and you can resize it. Let's just make it a bit bigger. Uh, at the top here, you have a shape search. So let's search for Apple, and it will show you results for apples. Uh, mostly not the edible apple. Below that, I won't cover the scratch pad at this point, you have the various libraries, the various built-in libraries that are available in draw.io. If you scroll down, you can see UML, you can see entity relation, flowchart, and so on. And always visible at the bottom is more shapes. So clicking that brings up a dialogue displaying all of the built-in shapes that are available. You can select and deselect as needed. If you click on it, it gives you a preview on the right-hand side if you wanna see what you're getting first. So I could add sitemap, I could get rid of UML, and you can see then we've got sitemap there. If you want to open a library, just click the title uh, and all of the options will appear again. You just drag them in or click to add them to the diagram. If you click again on the title, it will close that library up. Aside from inserting new shapes, dragging from the sidebar introduces some additional time savers. For example, you can drag a shape onto an existing shape. Let's do something fairly simple. So take the triangle, uh, drag it over the um, rectangle there until you see the swap icon appear, then drop, and you will replace the shape with the same geometry, but of the shape that you dragged in. You could also, if we grab this connector, make it unconnected, say take a shape and drag it onto that endpoint, and then that connects as a floating connection to the shape that you've dragged onto the endpoint. And there's a lot of these sort of time savers, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll add a more advanced uh, video for the sort of power power users amongst you. Um, that's the main use of the shapes window. Let's, let's go to the right now, the format uh, panel. 
So that's contextual. That's based on what is and what isn't selected. Its primary role is to give you styling options that are relevant to whatever you have on the screen selected. Uh, with nothing selected, you see the diagram level options like grid, background, alignment guides. With a shape selected, uh, you have three tabs. So in style, you have coloring, line and fill coloring, um, sizes. In font, in text, you have things like font family, font size, all the all font related uh, styling. You have font positioning, text positioning. The arrange panel is a bit more advanced. It sort of deals with um, specific ge geometry values if you want to set them manually. Um, I think the main thing that's useful there is to front to back. And I think you saw me use that earlier where I brought, that's the Z order, i.e. the order of shapes as you look into the page. Um, you can put one thing under or over another. So there the um, the site map is behind, you say, to front, and it brings it in front in the Z order. So having a connector selected is the other option, of course, and the, the options are very similar to a shape. Um, the key difference probably here to remember is the pull downs uh, in, in the second section. There's two and then three. So the second pull down, for example, is dash patterns. If you want to set a dash pattern uh, on an edge. Um, then the third one is routing or routing if you're on the other side of the pond. Um, that's things like straight line, orthogonal, curved, entity relation, and so on. Um, and you saw me set a, a, a orthogonal line earlier. There's a curved line. The fourth and the fifth are the start and end decorations. They're normally arrows, but they're called decorations because they, they don't have to necessarily be arrows. Um, for example, here I can at the start add a circle, which is actually embedded. You can partially see there. Uh, one useful tip here, we get asked this a lot, is if you select the edge and click reverse, it reverses the, uh, let me set that straight so it is easier for you to see. If I click reverse now, it reverses the edge. So if you've got an arrow going in one direction and you want it to go in the other direction, you can either use reverse on the arrange panel or just press the keyboard shortcut, which is Control or Command uh, R. So let's put these ideas so far together and create a simple flowchart. So let's start with a rectangle. I'm going to give myself a bit more room, extend below. So that's going to be the start. I'm going to have a main path going down here. And the advantage of clicking this is everything's in a straight line. It's equidistant. Um, it's, it's particularly useful for flowcharts. Here, um, I'm going to drag this one further down. But as I drag it further down, the alignment guides tell me when it's ready. And I'll have another one there just coming across. So. First problem is they're all rectangles. I don't want them all to be rectangles. So let's say that the start and the end should be ellipses. Let's drag one there. Actually, there's a, a better way to do this. Select the start and the end, hold down Command or Control or Windows, press Shift and click on the sidebar and that changes everything that you've got selected. Um, that is a decision. So that's technically a diamond. Um, okay, let's say let's say that'll do for now. Um, then let's add some coloring. Let's say the first and the last should be blue. Um, let's say that everything other than the decision should be yellow, and decision let's say green. And then start by typing some text. Literally start end uh, some decision there, uh, some process process and so on. And they, they have a very, very simple flowchart. Um, um, and you, you saw how I used some of the, the more advanced features just to sort of speed it up. And everything's equidistant. Everything's uh, in line. So, so there you go. There's our first flowchart.